Hello friends, my name is Manoj Vaprani. I welcome you all on behalf of the ADP Video World. Here we are with the last part, the last presentation with respect to the topic of portfolio management. By now we have already covered our four video presentations in which I made you understand about some of the relevant topics relating to the portfolio management, about its basics, about its advanced topics, for that matter the theory part and the models as well. I have covered the entire portion for portfolio management in my last four previous presentations. This is going to be the last one in which I'm going to discuss with you and I'm going to make you understand about the kind of relevant questions which are usually asked in C-Final examinations with relation to the topic of portfolio management. So with that hope and belief that yes, you have already revised each and every topic of mine which I made you understand in my four video presentations. Let's mark the beginning with the fifth presentation in which the first question will be like, this this question was asked in C final examination for uh, like a few attempts i haven't mentioned the attempts but this question has already been asked in a few of the attempts not just one so it says security d e n f have the following characteristics with respect to the expected return standard deviation and the correlation between them this question has provided us the table guys in which i have divided the table into six relevant columns number one is company number two return number three deviation part and number four uh, is correlation coefficient between three so i have divided it in three columns correlation coefficient between d e securities and then d and f security and then finally between e and f security what is the expected return and standard deviation of the portfolio composed of each investments in each so the question is pretty much simple pretty easy we have been provided the returns part guys 0.8 percent then 15 percent uh, and then 12 percent is the return with the security d e n f and the standard deviation has also been provided to us which is 0.02 for company d 0.16 for company e and 0.08 for company f alongside they have also provided us the correlation coefficient d and e that's 0.4 for d and f it's 0.6 and for E and F, it's 0.8. We have been asked in this question to calculate the expected return from the portfolio and the standard deviation of the portfolio, which is composed of these three different investments in equal size. So remember guys, I want to make you understand this thing. Once you get this thing, which is equal investments, never ever go for this thing, which is what, what usually students do is they basically put uh, the weights in the numeric terms, which is 0 0.33, 0 0.33 for D, 0 0.33 for E, and then 0 0.33 for F. Never do that because when you do 0 0.33 and when you do 0 0.33 and 0 0.33, it comes out to be 0 0.99, okay? It never becomes one, okay? So it's always preferred and recommended to go for one divided by three and multiply it with your remaining portion, okay? Directly go with one divided by three, that's it. That's the best way you can go ahead with it and thereby you will be reducing your chances of getting the wrong answer in your examination. So always go for numeric term in fractions rather than the proper numbers. So one by three is recommended. So let's go ahead with the solution part in order to understand this question completely. So return on the portfolio will be like very simple. One by three multiply by the return of D which is 0 0.08 plus one by three multiply the same with return of E which is 0 0.15 and 1 by 3 multiply the same with 0 0.12 which is the return of f and you get a figure of 11.67 in this particular scenario next comes up the standard deviation part so guys i would like to uh, make you revisit and reiterate a few of the things which you did in your school time remember there used to be a formula for a plus b uh, whole square and we used to be like a square plus b square plus 2ab remember simple stuff have you ever thought about this thing that that formula that you actually studied in your school time will be like really helpful for your uh, ce final preparation <laughs> yeah indeed it is guys so that same formula has to be like used while deriving your standard deviation of the portfolio as well so because here also the very same formula is being used in a very simple layman term so here is one a square then b square then c square because in this quiz there are three different returns of the security a square plus b square plus c square then plus two with a b then plus two with b c 
and plus two with C A like this. So this is one point one divided by nine, which is square of one divided by three. So A square, which is one divided by nine, multiply it with the return part, which is two. In this portion, it is the two two percent is the return with D security two square plus one divided by nine again multiply it with 16 square which is the return for security number two and then here it comes basically it's not the return that's where the problem was it's the deviation part okay it's a deviation because we are calculating the deviations we are not calculating the return so wait for d multiply it with deviation for d to the power two plus weights for e that is one divided by nine multiply it with deviation of d that is 16 square plus 1 divided by 9 multiply it with deviation for f which is 8 square plus 2 into weight of d which is 1 divided by 9 because that is the whole square formula for it multiply it with deviation which is 2 multiply it with deviation of e which is 16 multiply the same with correlation coefficient between them which is 0 0.4 so here it's 1 divided by 9 because it's been told to us that 1 divided by 3 is the weight for d and 1 divided by 3 is the weight for e so i've just multiplied the same here you could have also written 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 1 divided by 3 i have directly written 1 divided by 9 over here now plus 2 multiply by 1 divided by 9 that is weight for d and f then multiply the same with 2 that is the deviation for d and comes out to be the deviation for f which is 8 multiply it with their correlation coefficient here in cell and then finally plus 2 multiply by 1 divided by 9 into 8 which is the deviation for f and multiply it with 15 which is the deviation for e multiply the same with correlation coefficient between them which is 0 0.8 to the power 1 divided by 2 under root that is so you get a figure which is 1 divided by 3 multiply the same with 4 plus 256 plus 64 plus 25.6 plus 19.2 plus 204.8 to the power 1 divided by 2 the standard deviation of the portfolio comes out to be 7.98 percent so this is the basic formula which is again uh, remember the basic stuff which was available to you in your school time which is a square plus b square plus 2ab and you will be able to solve it down very accurately without a doubt. The first one is about the weights multiply it with the standard deviation of the respective security to the power 2 because here we are doing it in square a square plus again the weight for another security multiply the same with the deviation again the same thing and plus 2 multiply by it the weight for first security the weight for second security multiply the same with deviation for first security multiply it with deviation for second security and multiply the same with your correlation coefficient and this thing has to be applied three way and you'll get the figure of your standard deviation of the portfolio isn't that simple it's way too simple guys just remember the basic formula a square plus b square plus 2ab and you'll get to know this was the question which was asked in various c final attempts i hope you guys are clear and thorough with it let's Go ahead with the second part. This question was again asked in CA final examination and it says following is the data regarding six securities A, B, C, D, E and F. Guys, in this table we have been like provided with return percentage and at the same time they have also provided us the risk percentage with it which is the standard deviation. So for security A, the return is 8, the risk is 4, security B, return is 8, so risk is 5 for security c the return is same as with risk which is 12 each for security d as well 4 is the return and 4 is the risk percentage e is providing a return of 9 percent at the same time they are providing you a risk of 5 percent and lastly f which is providing you the return of 8 percent and at the same time the risk percentage is 6 which of these securities will be selected this is number one and secondly they are also asking you if in case assuming that there is a perfect correlation you need to analyze whether it is preferable to invest in 70 percent 75 percent in security a and 25 percent in security c so let's come to the first part okay before heading towards the solution guys let's understand this question here itself 
we can see that security A is providing a return of 8% and it is providing a risk of 4% to bear with it. At the same time, when it comes to security B, they are providing a return of 8%, but for that, they are providing a higher risk, which is 5%. So technically, B gets eliminated in itself, okay? You won't be bearing higher amount of risk for same amount of return, obviously. So out of the two, security A is selected and B is outrightly rejected. Next comes in C and D. They both are providing you the same amount of return as what they are providing you the risk, which is 12-12 in case of C and 4-4 in case of D. So again, technically, if I'll compare A with D, D is providing me far, far, far less return as compared to A for the same amount of risk, which is 4. So technically, again, D gets eliminated. Next comes E, which is providing me a return of 9% and a risk of 5%. And then comes F, which is providing me a return of 8% and risk of 6%. Again, if I'll compare A with F, I'm getting the same amount of return, which is 8%. But in case of F, I'll have to take up a higher amount of risk, which is 6%. So technically, F also gets eliminated with this thing. So the final three securities that I have to consider are A, C and E. Okay, now comes who all will be the investors who would go for C if in case I am able to take up higher amount of risk. Okay, but I at the same time, I do want higher amount of return. So for all those risk taker, C is the best one. Why? Because they are providing you 12% return, but in consideration of the same, you'll have to bear with 12% risk as well. But for all those investors who are like risk averse, okay, they'll either go for A or E, at the most E, because A is providing you 8% return for 4% risk. And at the same time, E is also providing you 9% return for 5% risk. So Primarily, risk averse investors will go for only the one which is providing them the least amount of risk, which is the security A. So for all the risk takers, C is the best one to go for. For all the risk averse people, A is a security which they need to go for. E is something for which people will go if in case they want to take up moderate amount of risk. Okay, they are willing to bear 5% risk for 9% return. So in this way, you need to select onto your securities according to your preferences. Next comes, if in case I'm assuming the perfect correlation, we need to analyze whether it is preferable to invest in say 75% in security A and 25% in security C. If I invest 75% in security A, then what's gonna happen is my return that I'll get out of security A will be 6% out of eight because I'm investing only 75% here. For the rest to 25 that I'm investing in C, I will be getting three percent return because out of 12 I am investing 25 percent so 6 plus 3 that comes out to be 9 percent but when it comes to the risk percentage side if I am investing in security A 75 percent I'll have to bear a risk of 3 percent and if I am investing 25 percent in security C I'll have to bear a risk of again 3 percent so technically speaking I am bearing 7 percent risk okay here in this case and I'm getting a return of 9%. But if in case you can see guys, there is a security with the name of E. E is providing me 9% security for merely 5% risk. So if in case, assuming there is perfect correlation, whether it is preferable to invest 75% in security A and 25% in security C, absolutely not. Because you can get 9% return merely by investing in security E completely. And for that matter, you'll have to bear the risk of only 5%, which is absolutely better in comparison with 75% in investment for security A and 25% in security C. Choice is all yours. Picture is all clear in front of you. So this was the question which was asked in CE final examination. I hope you're clear with it. Wonderful. Let's move towards the solution part. For the investors who are preferring higher returns, security C, 12% return, simply go ahead with it. For risk averse investors, security A because it is providing you 8% return for 4% risk. For moderate risk taker investors, go for security E. And the thing which I just made you understand with this one, here is the same. If in case you're going for uh, investment in A and C, then you get a return of 9%. But then if in case uh, the portfolio, if I'll talk about the portfolio would provide you the risk factor at 6%. Okay. If in case you are going ahead with this particular formula of A square plus B square plus 
two AB types. If in case you are going directly with the weight percentage formula, then it will be like around seven for that matter. Seven and uh, no, that will also be like three only. Four multiplied by seventy-five percent that comes out to be three. Twenty-five percent multiplied by twelve comes out to be three. So again, uh, this way also you will get the risk percentage as six only. So my bad, I told you seven percent in the earlier slide. So go for six percent. But again, my situation is very much same. I would like to go for investment in security E rather than investing seventy-five percent in security A and twenty-five percent in security C because here I have to bear six percent risk. There I have to bear merely five percent risk for nine percent return. So. Should we go ahead with it? No, absolutely not. That's what was asked in one of the CA final examination questions. I hope you guys are thorough and clear with it. Wonderful. This question was again asked in CA final examination, and it says, following are the different state of economy, the probability of occurrence of that state, and the expected rate of return from security C and market in these states. This is the tabular presentation, uh, the table which has been provided to us, the three states, which is recession state, normal state. Boom state. Then comes probability of happening of these states, which is zero point two zero, zero point four zero, and zero point four zero. Lastly, is the column with rate of return. So, what should I expect as a rate of return with security C? That is fifteen percent if recession happens, fourteen percent if normal things happening, and then comes if twenty six percent if boom comes in. Then comes in the market, which is ten percent, sixteen percent, and twenty four percent if recession, normal, and boom happens. We are supposed to provide them five things. Number one. expected rate of return for each of them then comes expected standard deviation for each of them the covariance the last the coefficient of correlation and finally the beta so this is the solution for it and these are the basic four concepts which we we'll have to apply in order to get through of this question the first one comes out to be the correlation coefficient the correlation coefficient between the market and security c okay if i'll have to derive it i'll simply go ahead With the covariance part, okay, the covariance between the market and the security C, divide the same with your standard deviation of market, multiply it with your standard deviation of security C, and you'll get your correlation coefficient. Then comes your covariance. How do we go ahead with the covariance part? That will be equal to sigma probability. That will be incorporated in this segment because this question is all about the probability stuff. Multiply the same with return on C security. Deduct your average return on C. Multiply it with market return minus your average market return. Then you'll get your covariance part. Next comes your variance part, market variance, which I'll talk about. It's simple again. Sigma probability, which is PI, multiply it with RM, that is your market return in different scenarios. Deduct your average market return in overall totality to the power of two, and you'll get your market variance. And finally, is beta. beta of security c which comes out to be very simple you just need to divide your correlation coefficient with your market variance that's all that's all that's need to be done so coming back to the picture which is your first table which i have made in this presentation it has been divided into seven parts number one is state then comes your probability then comes your return which is the very thing uh, very common thing which is provided to me in the question itself then what should be my expected return okay that is what i'll get after i'll multiply my respective returns with their probabilities i'll get my expected return in totality that expected return will be like used by me to get the deviations okay i'll simply deduct my respective returns from that mean return okay and i'll get my deviations next i'll have to multiply the deviations i'll get my f column and once i'll multiply the same the squaring them up i just will multiply the same with probability which is 0.20 0.40 0 and 0.40 in these different scenarios so recession coming to one recession the normal then boom probability 0.20 0.40 0.40 the returns which have been like provided to us in the question 15 14 and 26 15 multiplied by 0.20 comes out to be 3. 14 multiplied by 0.40 comes out to be 5.6. 26 multiplied by 0.40 comes out to be 10.4. So overall expected return total will be 19. Now 15 minus 19 comes out to be minus 4. 14 minus 19 comes out to be 5. 26 minus 19 comes out to be 7. So minus 4 minus 5 plus 7. Minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 comes out to be 16. Minus five multiplied by minus five comes out to be twenty-five. Seven multiplied by seven comes out to be forty-nine because we are squaring of the deviations. Now these squaring of the deviations 
will be multiplied with their probabilities. 16 multiplied by 0 0.2 comes out to be 3.2. 25 multiplied by 0 0.4 comes out to be 10. 49 multiplied by 0 0.4 comes out to be 19.60. Overall, it will be 32.80, which will be none other than your security C's variance. Thorough and clear with it, guys. Wonderful. Let's move towards the second part, which is now the market thing. Again, the similar thing has to be taken care of in case of market as well. Exactly similar, nothing has to be changed. 10, 16, 24 is the different market returns in three scenarios. Recession, normal boom, which is 0 0.20, 0 0.40 and 0 0.40. Multiply 0 0.20 with 10, you will come out with 2. 0 0.4 with 16, you will come out with 6.4. 0 0.4 with 24 comes out to be 9.6. In totality, overall it's 18. Now comes your deviation part. 10 minus 18 comes out to be minus 8. 16 minus 18 comes out to be minus 2. 24 minus 18 comes out to be plus 6. Now just square off all of them, you'll get 64, 4, 36. Multiply the same with probabilities, you'll get 12.8, 1.6 and 14.40, which in total comes out to be 28.80. Now, since I've got and this is your market variance okay now the third thing comes out to be the last one which is this so this is being divided into three parts again state probability rc minus rc rm minus average market return and then multiplication of them so this thing has been like taken care of from this only which is these three these ones are the ones which have been taken from this so 0 0.20 multiplied by 4 multiplied by this and you'll get a figure of 6.4 then 4 and then 16.8 you'll get a figure of 27.20 now all of these figures okay they'll have to be used in your formula part which i just mentioned you in your first thing so this is your covariance okay pi multiplied by this multiplied by this i just got to know about this one which is 27.20 my mistake, I have uh, kept it here as market variance. It is not market variance. It is basically covariance. Okay. Next comes in your correlation coefficient between your security C and market, which comes out to be with covariance divided by standard deviation of market and standard deviation of security C 27.20 divided by under root 28.8, which we just found in this one and 32.80, which we just found in the first segment. They'll have to be like multiply it and you'll get a figure of 0 0.88 and finally when it comes to beta of security c you just need to divide your covariance with your market variance which is 27.20 and this one and then 28.80 and this one and you'll get a beta of 0 0.94 so therefore the expected rate of return for security c will be in totality 19 percent which we just got from this one my expected return and for the market it would be 18 percent expected standard deviation would be for security c 5.73 and 5.37 28.8 under root comes out to be 5.37 and 32.8 under root comes out to be 5.73 that will be for security c and market then the covariance we have actually computed it here the correlation coefficient which is 0.88 and lastly, the beta, which is 0 0.94. These are the kind of questions that you can expect if in case anything comes up or pops up in your examination with respect to your portfolio management. These are the real type of questions which they'll ask you. And this is one prominent question which has been like asked in N number of papers, N number of papers. I can't even tell you the figure, okay? This is what is expected for you to come out from this particular chapter. This is going to be the last question of this particular presentation. This was again asked in one of the CE final examination and it was a bit different from the other one. So I just incorporated in my video. So it says a project had an equity beta of 1.2 and was going to be financed by a combination of 30% debt and 70% equity. Assuming that the debt beta to be zero, Calculate the project beta taking risk-free rate of return to be 10% and return on market portfolio at 18%. Also calculate the expected rate of return from this project. Simple guys, we are supposed to tell them about the project beta. It's a very simple thing, but that will be beta of complete portfolio, which is beta of A will be equal to beta of equity multiply 
your equity portion divide the same with your total that is debt plus equity plus beta of debt multiply the debt portion divide the same with your overall which is d plus e so in this scenario it will be 1.2 which is your equity beta multiply with your 70 percent equity plus 0.3 beta of debt is zero in this case so zero multiply by your weight which is 0.3 for debt the overall it comes out to be 0.84 that is your project beta and the next thing which was asked from us in the question itself was expected rate of return so that is 0 0.10 plus 0.84 that is your risk free rate of return that is provided to us plus your 0.84 that is your beta multiply it with your market return which is 18 minus your risk free return that is 10 comes out to be 16.72 that is nothing but kappa model guys remember kappa model which is risk free rate of return plus your beta multiply the same with market risk premium and you'll get your expected rate of return these are the kind of questions that you can expect in your examination from the portfolio management chapter this is how it's being done so with this the entire chapter of portfolio management is over i just hope you guys are thorough with your revision part and certainly you guys are geared up your examinations and certainly you're done and through with each and every concept so just revise whatever the things that i'm telling you up that i'm making you understand that will be like really really helpful for you guys if in case you have liked this video if in case you have found this video useful not to mention that please share it with as many friends of yours as you can and stay connected i'll be seeing you in my next particular presentation with the last topic of sfm which will be mergers and acquisitions not that very big topic that will be like summed up in the next three to four three maximum i guess three maximum presentation and with that take care god bless you all bye